beard, uh, slim with dark tennis shoes, begging for money. First degree murder. We're going to move on to the next step, which we are actually at a point now where we can open up SDR Sharp. If we can go to the icon and double click on it. I'm going to go ahead and select run. You may get a warning from your antivirus software. Uh, quite honestly, I've never really had an issue with it. And you're looking at your SDR Sharp screen for the very first time. So what you're going to want to do is go up to the little cog and click on it. And you're going to want to tell it which device you're using. This is mine, generic, yada, 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 stuff, stuff, stuff. And you're going to want to click on it. I'm actually going to bring this gain up to about 38, just roughly. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit close. And then go to the source. And you want to make sure that this RTL SDR is set to USB. So make sure that's set to USB. Make sure the device is set and that you pull your gain up a little bit. And then I'm going to hit close. And the next thing I'm going to do is hit play. And we are in the FM band at 105.5. I don't know if that's a radio station in my area or not, but here we go. What a mess. That's loud and obnoxious. Okay, I know one trick to get rid of all this nonsense is to go to a narrow FM band. Turn the squelch up. At least that way it shuts up. All right. So here we are at 70. Now, all this red area, it means it's getting a, a ton of information. Okay, and you can see where this, uh, it goes from 0 to 100. So if I go over here to my third slider down, I can actually bring this down and reduce the range. So I'm at more of a, a realistic range. And as you can see, that mellowed out this tone here. So what you're looking at here is something called a waterfall. And uh, the hotter or the redder the waterfall, the, the more information it's receiving at, at any given time. And we can make changes to this waterfall to help mellow it out a little bit by pulling this guy down a little bit. And as you can see, it's pretty obvious. We're, we're right here. It's pretty obvious that there it looks like there's a station at 105.3 and it, there's definitely a station at 104.7. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And I'm going to go to Wideband FM. And there we have Wideband FM. So, if I narrow the bandwidth, obviously to get the FM station we need more bandwidth. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm left clicking and holding on the mouse, and I'm holding it, and, I'm, and now I can pull it. So, you can see we get this song right here. I don't really particularly want a song. The other place that you can adjust the bandwidth is right here. So, if you want to sit there and hold on to this, FM band requires a pretty wide bandwidth. You can see where it's slowly getting wider and wider. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Now, I can click anywhere in here, like left click and drag. And as you can see, the numbers, these numbers, are moving. Watch. As I click, one oh, if I look at this number right here, 1034, it is going down. There's 102, 1021. Now take a note of the fact that I'm looking at 101.5 up to 103.3. And I can make an adjustment to the amount of stuff that I'm seeing on the screen by going like this, by moving it up. As you move it up, you see less and less of the spectrum at a time. So I can move it all the way up to the top and that I'm really, really zoomed in tight. So I'm going to go to a radio station that I know that works. Uh, 99 come, let's see here. A stadium, a station that works. 99.7 is a station in my area. And as you can see, if I go like this, I'm essentially zooming in and I'm seeing less of the spectrum, but I'm seeing more detail within that spectrum. The reason why I show you this is because different frequencies are going to require different uh, bandwidths. FM requires a ton of bandwidth. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Okay, so if I use my mouse, I can mouse over the number and highlight it. Then I can use my keyboard. Eight, five, seven, seven, three, seven point five. And then I hit enter. Alright, so I've gone to eight five seven dot seven three seven dot five and 
And as you can tell, there's something going on right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Then I can take care of the squelch. Maybe turn it up a little. I can zoom in a little. Make sure that my bandwidth is correct. And really get an idea for what's going on on this channel. Right now, it's nothing. Okay, I've picked this station 857 737.5 for a reason, and that is, is that I know that it's an existing analog, uh, non-trunked, non-encrypted channel. Uh, it's a channel that I can actually capture on my old-fashioned uh, analog scanner. So I wanted to start here just to kind of show you what you probably already know from your analog scanner days. Turn the squelch down, or up, I mean. Okay, so let's take a look at a few things. Um, number one, we got to set our bandwidth. I generally set my bandwidth to be as wide as whatever frequency that I'm receiving. This stands for narrow FM. Uh, these, if you if you click on these, it'll make adjustments um, to your bandwidth. Wide FM, narrow FM, wide FM, AM. I don't know what DSB is. CW, I think, is for shortwave and for listening to Morse code. I've never used RAW. Never used this one. This has something to do with left. I don't know whether it's left side bandwidth. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it only expands the bandwidth uh, on the left-hand side, not the right-hand side. Uh, for the vast majority of what I do, I use the NFM, and then I can pull it out as wide as I want and shrink it up as much as I want. Um, but essentially what we're using SDR Sharp for is to find frequencies that we want to listen to. And what I really want to drive home is, is finding trunking frequencies. Uh, I'm going to pull up another reference for you. Uh, this is called radioreference.com. You can go to the database. Um, let me just go ahead and pick North Carolina. And I'm going to pick the county that I'm in. And you can see these are all the old school channels. So I think radioreference.com is the best information as it pertains to scanner frequencies on the internet. So you could actually go to any one of these and listen. However, let's take a look at this information right here. Charlotte, U.S. region. All police fire EMS comms are on the county's P25 system. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now this is going to give us trunking reference information. So if I want to listen to... I'm in Charlotte Mecklenburg County. If I want to learn, listen to the Mecklenburg County, I've got all of these stations that I need to listen to. So let's try that. Let's try going to 851-2375 and see what happens and hit play. That's not very fun, is it? So you see all these channels here. This is where trunking comes in. Essentially, the way trunking works, back in the olden days when you wanted to communicate, you were given a channel. And say you were given channel number 851-2375, and that's the one channel that you had. Uh, and you could converse back and forth. Um, but what I guess the FCC realizes that that was a very inefficient methodology for which to use a channel because it wasn't being used, I don't know, 90% of the time. So what they did was... They decided to let multiple entities use the same channels, uh, but essentially what they did was they give them a trunk, meaning several, of channels to use and allows them to use whatever one happens to be open at the time. So this is going to require two things. It's going to require a control channel, which is supposed to be the one in red here, and the control channel basically waits for any any communication to come in and it would immediately go to the control station which is in this particular case supposed to be 853 8125 so anytime that any particular entity wanted to communicate they'd push the talk button on their mic and it would immediately go to the control station the control control station would scan all of 
the other channels looking for an open channel and once it found one it would allow communication on that channel. So that's why we need two antennas to listen to a trunked station. Our first antenna we're going to set to the primary and then the second antenna is going to be able to pick up all of the secondary channels. Now hopefully that made sense. If I go to 853.8125, let's see what happens. Okay, so while we sit and wait for something to happen uh, exciting over here at 853.8125, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give you a quick overview of the screen. Now, a whole bunch of stuff over here is you know, a whole bunch of stuff that you're probably not going to mess with. Uh, one good one that you will use is that if you find frequencies that you want to key in on, uh, like say for example we wanted to save 853.8125, we could go new. You could group a bunch of FM stations together, you could group a bunch of ham stations together. Let's just call this one public because we're in, we're close to the public band and then it, this one is supposed to be supposed to be the police fixed channel but it's not. Once we move over to a different station, if we wanted to get back to our station that we saved, you just double click it and it actually takes us back to 853.812. So this is SDR Sharp. So you could effectively stop right here with just SDR Sharp and get hours and hours of entertainment out of basically using this as an old school scanner. So just as an example of using SDR Sharp by itself, you can uh, kind of dial around the frequency range and see what's going on on various frequencies, like on your old school scanner. Find something you like, you can save it down there. Uh, and this doesn't scan per se, but there is some add-on software to SDR Sharp that will allow you to, you know, you could save 15, 20, 30 stations, whatever it is. I, I actually don't know what the, the total amount is, but then you can basically scan through those. Uh, this is within the CB band. I'm probably not close enough to the interstate to get anything here. So you can use SDR Sharp to poke around a good portion of the frequency band. I think all the way up to about 1.6 gigahertz or something like that. I, I forget. Eventually, you'll have uh, a bunch of stations here that uh, you'll like to bounce from one to the next to the next. And so you can jump around and look for stuff. You know, watch the waterfalls. This is a perfect sign of uh, just kind of continuous static. Okay, so after you get bored of poking all around the band from bottom to top. If you don't find some of the things that you're looking for, uh, they very well might be on a digital station or they might be on a, um, they might be digital and trunked. And what you're going to want to do is start looking for the trunked stations. Now remember, the, the trunked signals are going to emit a continuous tone, as you can see by this waterfall right here. And that's essentially what you're going to be looking for. And I'm going to kind of zoom in. So we're at 853.775, and we're zoomed in pretty good, but you can kind of get a feeling for what the waterfall looks like. Okay, and if we turn it up, it's going to have a very distinctive sound. Almost like a wah, 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 wah. Um, let's take a look at a, another one. Here's 852.7125, and we'll move this over a little bit. Here is another P25 trunked and uh, see what it sounds like. That is the very distinct sound of a digital trunked. Now, if I pull out some, you'll see that this range, um, I'm just happen to be between 851.9 and 853. Um, there's a bunch of trunked fixed stations. Okay. And then if you want to look at the communication that's going on, they're going to pop up on some of these other frequencies right here. Like here's, here's a pop-up right here. Um, here comes one right here. Now, if we try to click on that, we're not going to hear anything because it's digital. That's all we're going to be able to hear. Now here's here's what looks a little different. Turn it up some. It's probably another one. 
Now, instead of being a P25, that one might be a little bit different. And if we go back to the rtlsdr.com site and we go to the feature tutorial for P25 digital voice decoding, they give you kind of some examples of what I just showed you. Maybe probably some better ones, but you can see here's the P25 band right there. This might be an example. Here's an example of the P25. It looks very much like uh, this one right here. You don't really need SDR Sharp uh, to do what we're ultimately going to do, which is using Unitrunker and uh, DSD Plus. Uh, to listen to the digital trunk stations. Uh, however, neither one of those pieces of software give you this uh, unique waterfall view. So our next step is to add Unitrunker and DSD Plus along with the uh, virtual cable uh, to turn all of this unrecognizable digital garbage into something that we can actually decode and hear. So whether you decide to use SDR Sharp to find your digital fixed stations or RadioReference.com, either way is a great way to be able to find your digital trunking stations. So let's get into the next step. Dude on the bench, smoking at the Lincoln Heights Park. No, it's fine. Dude on the bench, smoking at the Lincoln Heights Park. No, it's fine. Dude on the bench, smoking at the Lincoln Heights Park.